Welcome to the University of Nottingham. With me today I have Dr. Simeon Zal, who is an expert on the theology of the period of the Reformation. And the central figure of the Reformation, perhaps the one that everyone knows, is Martin Luther. So, Simeon, you're very welcome. Why is Martin Luther so significant? Martin Luther is significant for a great number of reasons. First of all, so he was a, he was a monk who lived in the early 16th century uh, and became very dissatisfied with the Catholic Church of which he was a part. He felt that it needed to be reformed uh, in fundamental ways. And so he initiated this protest movement, this reform movement that kind of that ended up taking over really all of Europe for, for uh, about a century. And he, uh, but at the, at the center of this movement was an idea that Luther came up with, um, or that, he, that occurred to him that he discovered, he would say, in the 15, around 15, 16, 17, which was the idea of justification by faith alone. And this doctrine was a way of thinking about Christian salvation, and how does salvation work? Does it work through uh, through the sort of trying to get more holy, invo being involved in the practices of the church, confessing your sin, this kind of thing, um, or where does holiness come from, I guess was his mm -hmm. question. And he came to believe that holiness was something that God gave through faith rather than something that we worked on or built in ourselves. And this may seem like a sort of slightly esoteric point, but its implications for the church in the 16th century were huge because so much of what the church uh, was involved with, uh, the sacraments, the performance of um, and pilgrimages and uh, being involved with relics, and there's a whole, any number of things, the whole nature of what it was to be a priest, all was involved in the idea of helping Christians become more holy and confess their sin. And Luther's idea of justification by faith basically meant that all that could be done away with and the church had to be rethought. Uh, and this idea found uh, a huge audience in Europe, especially amongst humanists, uh, amongst scholars early on, and, um, and it ended up having these massive knock-on effects that have, have changed the history of Europe. And when he talks about justification by faith, mm -hmm. how he, what, is the, what is the kernel of that as opposed to, to mm -hmm. what he sees as its opposite? justification by works? Well, the idea, and it's a bit of a caricature to say that the Catholic Church was teaching justification by works, which would mean that um, God hasn't decided yet whether to, um, whether to save a person until he sees that they've mm -hmm. become holy enough. Um, and that the way that they do that is through deeds, through, through um, things like, you, you, in Luther's case, he went to become a monk so mm -hmm. that he could accelerate this process of taming his flesh and becoming more holy uh, through the things that he did. Um, and justification by faith undermines any sense that our actions, mm -hmm. that, that our salvation depends on our actions, on our deeds. It, he, in it, behind it is an idea of human nature. That human beings are so messed up, so sinful, that they can't actually do the kind of righteous deeds that God would require. So you then, and you start off with something that seems very obvious that you can't work your way mm -hmm. into heaven mm -hmm. but then you get the impression that Luther pushes that to the to uh, so far in another direction mm -hmm. that he ends up that deeds almost become irrelevant well yes and no this was the point that Luther's enemies or his his opponents uh, in debate um, pressed him on a lot well what surely the Bible says we need to be holy we need to do good works. Mm -hmm. um, and Luther, how in your system does that, uh, can we think about how that might be important if, if it's not related to our salvation, if ultimately God will save us regardless of whether mm -hmm. we do any good works. And his answer essentially was that the good works will follow naturally through the presence of the Holy Spirit and out of a sense of gratitude. So he certainly thought that Christians would do good works, but he thought that their motivation for doing them would be very different. It would be out of a sense of gratitude rather than out of fear of so, damnation. So the idea is they, they become aware that they, that they are 
they are saved mm. and becoming aware that they are saved, they then produce good works. Yes, they're, they're free not to worry about themselves mm. and that actually can inform a Christian ethic of taking care of others. And of course there's an interesting thing and that is that you rightly say this is a very new idea and it's something that Luther comes up with and he comes up with it in a very short period of time, just about 500 years ago, almost to the day. Yes. But of course it is actually built into a larger p pattern that thinks of justification as a process. Mm. Uh, in a way, justification is some, sort of, is some sort of series of things and he then changes the series, but it's still a series. Well, he does and he doesn't. He's, he's certainly against the idea that it's a progress, that salvation mm. involves a, a, a growth or mm. a progress in holiness. But that doesn't mean that it's just a one-off. Mm. Um, I mean, for Luther, it's, it's an existential reality. It's a dramatic reality in people's lives in the world. And so that's one area where he often gets misunderstood, okay. is that people think that he's talking about something very abstract, a kind of okay. rational bean counting in the sky that God just uh, says you're, you're saved even though nothing's changed. And that's not really what Luther taught. But he did think that salvation itself all happened all at once, really in baptism. That's where he located the moment where this justification by faith takes place. So when you use the word existential, it is that God, God intervenes and the moment of baptism is the moment of the intervention. Yes, yes, it's, it's an event. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's very idea. hard to grasp that, but we have to, we have to try and get this sense of the, yeah. the, the surprise. There is an element of yes. surprise in Luther's theology. Yes, but it, partly how he understood this event and how this mm. actually works kind of existentially is through um, what he called the distinction between the law and the gospel. And this is part of what gives it this narrative existential character. He thought that the way that justification uh, works itself out is through first you hear God's law and instead of saying, oh, that's a great idea, I should do those things that God's commanding, you say, oh no, I haven't done those things, I don't want to do them. And so your, your sin is exposed by the law, and that's necessary, that's an important step. And then that prepares the way for the gospel. And you, may, you, may have, you used an interesting phrase there, you said there's no bean counting in the sky by God, but equally there's no bean counting by the faithful on earth. Because one of the things that he's that he's most worried about mm. is uh, the the whole idea that uh, one pilgrimage good, two pilgrimages better, three pilgrimages better again, or that you could count uh, um, the, the German scholars have a very thing numbered piety, mm. and that th that mm. is really one of the things that is actually one of the sort of practical realities that he would have encountered day by day that he that that, that, that that's terribly important as, as a point that the, his point of departure to object to isn't it yes that's exactly right and specifically and most famously this happened in relation to indulgences so there was a practice of of um of selling indulgences in the mm. late in the late medieval church where people could pay money uh, to, as, as a form of good works to support the church, in this case the building of St. Peter's Basilica, mm -hmm. uh, and that this would take time off of purgatory or would get relatives or yourself, would, would, would take literally numbers of years yeah. uh, off of the, the amount of time that you would have to be further purified by God after death. And of course built into the idea of indulgences is that you have to do numbers of prayers, you have to say the Lord's Prayer so many times, yeah and that if you say it once, that's good, say it twice, that has another effect. So it does turn it, it turns salvation into a commerce. Mm. And justification by faith is, 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 is undercutting that, that whole numbered logic completely. It's immediate and it's infinite, uh, rather than, than being a beginning of a, of a numerical process. Um. Simeon, that's a lovely precise point on which to end, thank you. <laughs>